in this episode we will be sending and launching two polar relays for our remote tech network in order to make it more robust and to be able to reach and remote control probes all the way to Minmus. All right, so in the previous episode, we got 300 science, meaning that we have a lot of science that we could actually consume. And I'm gonna consume it to unlock a couple of nodes, advanced construction, fuel systems. I mean, advanced construction would be handy, but I don't think I would want to use it just yet. It's for the air shells mostly. Electrics is I find more needed and I would like miniaturization, specialized control. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with specialized control because of the SAS unit. And we have, that leaves us one more node and I think I'm gonna go with that one. Okay, that's good. So, the others we can take up in subsequent episodes and maybe landing struts would have been useful, but probably we're gonna do it after that. Okay, so, Propulsion system, specialized control and storage technology are being researched. And after that, we will be constructing our new generation of polar satellites. Right, so next, gen next generation polar satellites. We're gonna use the octocore because it can host more solar panels, that's all. And then we put some batteries, we put some Oscar C tank. Now we can actually safely predict what would be the Delta V on this bugger, which I think is great. Shall we rather use Oscar B? No, that's 1096. No, Oscar C with an ant engine, I think that would be marvelous. Okay, now we need a higher gain antenna because I was thinking of initially going with this one, but I do want two antennas, one to the active craft and another one to Minmus. So, okay, then we have four solar panels, two antenna relays, one short range and another communitron. This will help to relays in, in, you know, things between the satellites and that's really simple. It's a polar comset Mark I Minmus. Okay, so we have a polar comm set and we have some extra solar panels. I'm even thinking of putting it to extra solar panels because these two antennas are power hungry. So it doesn't hurt to have extra two solar panels. Good. There we go. And you can see the Delta V on this bugger is 700 meters per second. So it's not a whole lot. Okay. That being said, we have rerouted the part so that the root part is in fact the ant engine, which makes it easily attachable. And let us build the deployer. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go again with this command pod, then I'm gonna be building a, you know, the coupler, and I'm gonna be placing two of them. And one of, both of them will be, you know, polar. So there's that, polar set deployer. The reason why I'm going for polar is mainly because I want to create some robustness. And as you saw, our per our communication network isn't perfect, meaning that probably sometimes at some point relays will be on one side, but if we have an additional po two polar satellites that are passing the area, then there is a good chance that we will make things a lot more robust. Good, then we have this extra um, container of supplies. Then I want to be placing a tank, good, see? And then we want to do an engine and that gives us a thrust to Delta V of 1,346, which I think is sufficient. Let's put some parachutes so that the craft can return. And then we need to be building a fairing that will be launching that sucker. I do like the idea of things being, you know, um, aerodynamically stable, so I'm gonna build something like that. Okay, that looks good enough in my book. We can, uh, we have the payload on, on top of our head. Think of those like one of old grannies that used to carry big baskets of everything on top of their heads. Okay, let's make a little bit of a thicker rocket. I'm thinking 1.87 meters with the Bobcat engine at the bottom. That would give us uh, a pretty good delta V and thrust to weight. Then we're gonna be placing two fuel tanks. There we go, let's place them like that. Wait, okay, something like that. And then I'm gonna put two swivels at the bottom for more control. Fuel lines, yes, we have those as well. 
I think it looks good, some now fins to help it steer. And this will be the craft going into the polar, you know, into the polar orbit. Okay, let's construct the launch tower for that. We have this rectangular launch tower, which I think is good. Let's be placing the, uh, the Titan launch tower. Good. I think still think it looks kind of cool and overall I like the design. So let's just connect it. Oh, a little bit too long. This one looks better. Okay, there we go. How the Kerbal gets on top of the capsule? I have absolutely no clue, guys. Right, there we go. Some batteries. Batteries are also important. Some solar panels on the deployer craft itself. Okay, making sure that we check our staging, that it's fully correct. Alright, that looks good to me. And now only thing that's left to do is we need to put some lights, because I don't like things being dark very, especially when we're deploying things and going willy-nilly. Okay, three, two, one, and ignition. And hit it. Thunderbirds are go! Well, technically, uh, our satellites are go. And contrary now towards swinging towards the east, we should be swinging to the north. Valentina is our pilot du jour. And Valentina has not... Well, she needs to get some ribbons as well, you know. Alright, so let us now point the, towards the North Pole and ultimately the idea would be that, okay, detach the side boosters. I mean, we are struggling a little bit with stability. The craft is wobbling and tending to do its own thing, while I think I want to get it to on the orbital north. There we go. We have a total of three and a half thousand meters per second delta V. That should be plenty because we are already 36 kilometers up. And I'm just trying, as you can tell by my direction, I'm trying to drag this yellow marker onto the north line. There we go. And once we get there, then we are gonna go and for the apoapsis of our 100 kilometers as we always do. There we go. 100 kilometers and look at how straight up we're going. That's beautiful. So yeah, straight north, sorry. There is no up in space. <laughs> All right, beautiful. That will be placing us in 100 by 100 kilometer orbit from which we will be able to go on further. Extend the solar array and uh, there we go. The burn will be in 20 seconds and it will be 1,075 meters per second, expanding most of our ascent stage. 800 meters per second, 600, 500 and onwards. Beautiful. There we go. 106 by 95, it doesn't need to be perfect, it just need, I need it just to work. Okay, fair enough. Now, when we, come, when we come and hit straight north, which would be like the North Pole, then I'm gonna be making a large burn to actually extend our South Pole apoapsis significantly outwards. So we're gonna go just there, okay. We have 144 meters per second in this guy. Okay, point the maneuver prograde. And let's do it. I'm thinking I'm gonna start the deployments from 400 by 400 kilometer orbit, so it's not really a big deal. Now, okay, crew report because we are just above the ice caps. Okay, hit it. 398 by 100, okay, good enough. And I'm actually gonna, the first satellite I'm gonna be deploying at the apoapsis, and it will be doing the north polar orbit. So pointing the north prograde, extending at least two solar panels. 
and then I want to be actually decoupling the satellite. There we go. And then we will be extending the rest of the solar panels and killing the antennas. So the antenna need to be setting to active vessel and to minmus. I only need two relays because towards the moon I already have the dishes pointed at. So this will be towards the active vessel and towards minmus. Good. Then I have, uh, uh, then I want to be extending these solar panels. Good. And I want to be raising my apoapsis to be up, I guess, 400 by 400 ish or something. And then I will be making sure that I, I might even extend it a lot more. So let's check it out. Anyway, this so the point of this polar satellite is that it will be going really, really high above Kerbin. So it will be a highly elliptical orbit, meaning like where its apoapsis will go as far as basically my delta V allows me. Maybe I'm, I'm thinking around 1.2 million meters or something like that. I don't want to go get out of the range of my communitron. So I really want to be, be around that area. And then the other one will go into the opposite. So this one will be going highly elliptical above the North Pole, while the other one will be going highly elliptical above the South Pole. And that's the kind of the main difference between the two that I'm planning to ensue. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay, that looks about right. So 1.2 million meters and I'm going to deactivate the engine and overall I'm actually pretty happy with that. That sounds great to me. Fine. Okay, let's call it Kerbin Short Range Polar Relay number one. And look at it go. It's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, time to switch to the deployer and make the second deploy. Let's extend the solar panels. We can do now extend all because we have nothing obstructing us. Then let's target the active vessel, target Minmus as well. And then we will be disconnecting from it. So let me just go warp until we get to the periapsis roughly. And then I want to decouple point prograde, decouple and burn. All right, switching to the craft activating the engine and just pointing prograde and burning until we get 1.2 million meters in the opposite direction. That sounds great to me. All right, so let's call it SAT Kerbin short range polar relay number two. Beautiful. All right, and let's also aim for the 1.2 million meters because I think it will be sound just right. I, I think it's actually the best place on how to put it. So those will also provide robustness, guys, because as you can see, the three relays that I have are one beside each other. And these two are going polar, so they will be in different orbits and uh, hopefully all of the satellites working together will prove to be at least somewhat redundant in terms of the network. And then I'm going to raise my periapsis to roughly 400 kilometers and I'm only going to give it to the flight computer to execute because I really don't want to bother with it. Flight computer should be quite capable in terms of handling that. Oh, look at this. Oh, if that's not the screenshot for the episode, then I don't know what is. I am definitely going to keep that one for uh, as a screenshot for the episode. It looks magnificent. All right. Flight computer is executing. Look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oof. You know, guys, these moments, I love them. All right. Anyway, so the moment we have completed our burn, we are at 1.2 million meter by 400 kilometer orbit. We're going to shut down the engine and we have our relay network. Beautiful. Now, the only thing that remains is actually to get Valentina back home to Kerbin. So let's do this quite quickly. And I'm thinking since I have I have a lot of Delta V, so I'm just going to deorbit her above the, uh, above the North Pole because we could do some science as well. I mean, why not? All right, so Valentina, okay, let's time accelerate a little bit until you get a safe return back. Beautiful. 
All right, decoupling and hopefully then things will be great. All right, going back. There we go. Decoupling and Valentina, just make sure that you make a safe splashdown. Crew reporting from space, that's nice. All right, let's accelerate the return a little bit. There we go, beautiful. All right, we are cutting the drogue chute and we will deploy in the main chute the moment we get closer. There we go, Valentina, our hero de jour. Hope you guys are liking this episode. Fling a like and, uh, you know, if you want to see more, hit subscribe. I will be seeing you in my next video after we check out how much science we got. Alright, a total of 100 science and thanks so much for watching.